This is Selma Schimmel at the 35th annual San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, obviously, in San Antonio. And now we're joined by Dr. Edith Perez, Director of Clinical Investigation and Breast Cancer, the program at the division, within the Division of Hematology Oncology at the Mayo Clinic, Professor of Medicine at the Mayo Medical School in Jacksonville, Florida. Hello, Dr. Perez. So nice to be here with you. It's great to see you again. I tried in Milan. We were at the ESMO meeting. You were a woman in demand, and I went to your presentation, and that session was packed. But that's, of course, you were talking about some very positive news for her two positive metastatic breast cancer patients. And so what we couldn't get to discuss with you there, we're going to discuss with you here in San Antonio. Very good. So tell me the latest. Yeah, you know, uh, this was the first presentation of uh, this novel drug. It's an, uh, actually an antibody drug conjugate called TDM1. Uh, as part of the management of patients eligible to receive first-line treatment for HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer. So, you know, a lot of advances have been made for the management of patients with HER2 positive breast cancer, but we continue to look for even better approaches, and that's what TDM1 appears to bring. So TDM1 is actually a new type of drug, really. It's a combination of trastuzumab, a monoclonal antibody, and a chemotherapy drug, which is called DM1. And we're talking about Herceptin. That, that's right. Trastuzumab is known as, as Herceptin. Uh, so what we're doing with uh, this new molecule, TDM1, is combining Herceptin with chemotherapy as part of one molecule. So what we did, after studies had been conducted evaluating TDM1 in patients with refractory HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer, is that we thought to evaluate this drug in the first line setting. And this is what I presented at the ESMO meeting in Milan. So we did a comparison of TDM1 as single agent versus a previously known combination of taxotere or docetaxel with Herceptin. And the data were really very fascinating in that we looked at two different issues, efficacy, safety. In terms of efficacy, the trial demonstrated that we could observe a 48% response rate for the patients who received the new treatment, TDM1, versus 42% for those assigned to the older strategy of docetaxel with trastuzumab. That was one thing. But the second aspect actually raised my interest even more in that we were able to cut down the side effects in half for the patients who received TDM1 compared to the older strategy of a chemotherapy drug and trastuzumab given together. What are the common side effects that you noticed a, 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 an improvement in? Yeah. We noticed an improvement on the severe side effects in general. So the side effects with the chemotherapy trastuzumab uh, were 75% versus 37% for those assigned to, to, to TDM1. In terms of the specific side effects, yes. the main ones uh, with the chemotherapy, docetaxel with trastuzumab included neutropenia, febrile neutropenia, and alopecia, so hair loss. With TDM1, we saw no episodes of neutropenia, no episodes of febrile neutropenia, and the rate of hair loss of al or alopecia was only 1.5%. It was a fantastic awesome. result, yes. Yeah. What does this mean for the standard of care? It means that it's very important for us to continue evaluation of TDM1 in the first line setting, because if we can really prove and corroborate the data from the study I presented in Milan, that TDM1 can offer similar or even a slightly better efficacy than the current standard, but with much lower toxicity, it could really mm -hmm. change the standard of therapy for our patients. Where do we go from here? Okay, we have already started a larger trial, a global trial, evaluating TDM1 in this setting, and the trial is called the Marianne trial, which already started accruing patients in June of this year. So we expect uh, this uh, uh, global trial to complete accrual actually in the next uh, two to three years, and we'll see what the data show. How many patients are you trying to enroll? 1,092 patients, uh, and the randomization is to one of three arms. 
either uh, etaxane in combination with trastuzumab versus TDM1, a single agent, versus TDM1 in combination mm -hmm. with a second anti-HER2 drug that is called rituzumab. So for the patient listening right now, or viewing actually, yes. hearing what you have to say, what is the discussion they want to have with their doctor? That they want to know the availability of clinical trials they can participate in, and also the discussion should include that things are better today than they used to be five years ago, but we need to continue looking for other options. Dr. Perez, what about the patient that's being seen in the private practice who may not yet know about the drug, and is it ever possible for these patients to collaborate with a university involved in the trial, even if they're in the private sector? What a great question. For this particular trial, Marianne, there are investigators, certainly throughout the world, and also throughout the United States. So we're conducting this study not only in big universities, but also in smaller groups, so that patients can have greater access to participation. You know, as I listen to you talk, I, I have to say the whole area of HER2 positive breast cancer patients has been one in evolution and progress over uh, several years now, and I think it's really fascinating to take a subset and, and see how explosive uh, the research has become. You know, you're absolutely right, uh, because some people may have thought, well, you know, HER2 positive breast cancer accounts for, quote unquote, only 20% of the patients. But look at what we've been able to do by taking the science into the development of new agents and clinical trials that, that have actually re revolutionized the survival of patients with this subset of breast cancer. Closing thought? I am uh, very uh, honored to be part of uh, this entire field and to be able to take science into uh, the clinics to improve people's lives. Well, having known you for a long time and seeing what you've accomplished on a global level, I mean, I, it may sound silly for me to say, I, I, I feel one proud to know you, but proud to see how far you've come with your research. You are a very important key opinion leader. Thanks for your comments. So thank you. I'm also a uh, her two positive patient, irrelevant for me in the sense that it was almost 30 years ago. Can you believe I'm such a long-term survivor? I was quite young in my 20s. So thank you for everything you're doing, Dr. Edith Perez. Thank you. Great.